All right, so we're at the point in our polynomials unit where we're ready to look at um, getting you to develop some strategies with factoring that involves all of the types of factoring that we've learned so far. We know that you know these factoring questions may not come up in isolation as individual concepts. So it's important for you to be able to recognize uh, a particular polynomial and to know what type of factoring is appropriate. So I have this fa uh, factoring flowchart here, which I think will help. It, it may help you strategize or model how you what you should be thinking about when you're attempting factoring questions, when all of the different types of poly polynomials are all sort of together. So let me break this down for you. So um, the factoring flowchart, hopefully I've tried to instill this as much as possible, that the first type of factoring you should always do regardless of the polynomial is that you should factor out any con gra the greatest common factor. So remove that if there is one that exists. So you should always look for one and if there is one that exists just remove it and put it outside of the brackets and then factor the remainder. So then what you need to do is you need to evaluate well once I've removed my greatest common factor how many terms are in the polynomial that remains? Are there two terms? Are there three terms? Or are there four terms? And so based on the number of terms that you have in, in the polynomial, that's going to help you decide what types of factoring might be appropriate. So if you have two terms in the polynomial that remains, the, that is a good indication that you might be looking at a difference of squares. So based on the criteria that we looked at earlier, um, you have to make a decision, is it a difference of squares, yes or no? And if it is a difference of squares, then you're going to factor it as such. So just a quick reminder, if something is a difference of squares, we're going to see first of all that it's a difference, there's a subtraction, and that this first term is a perfect square, which means it has a nice square root, and the last term is a perfect square, which means that it has a nice square root. And if we're if we're going to factor it, we're going to take the square root of the first term and put one of those in each brackets, and the square root of the last term and put one of those in each brackets. One is a sum and one is a difference. Okay? So if you look at your um, at your binomial, right, your two-term polynomial, and you realize that it is indeed not a difference of squares. So let me give you an example of a case that would look like that. So let's say instead this question had been x squared plus 4, right? That is not a difference of squares because um, it has a sum instead of a difference. Another example of something that would not be a difference of squares would be if I had, let's say, x squared minus 5. And the reason for that is that 5 is not a perfect square. Okay, So if you end up in that situation, there's no work for you to do anymore. You're done. You're factoring. Um, so it's either the case where you've removed a common factor, and that's all the factoring that you can do, or there was never a common factor, and this is a polynomial that cannot be factored. Okay, moving on. Let me erase some of that. Let me get rid of some of that. There we go. Beautiful. And so now uh, in the case where you look at your polynomial and it has three terms, then you have a couple of different choices, a few different choices. First of all, if in yesterday's lesson you were able to successfully identify a trinomial as a perfect trinomial square, then you can use the quick trick that we talked about by saying, okay, I'm going to take the square root of the first term, square root of the last term, and then the sine of the middle term, and then square the whole function. Uh, if you can recognize that, then that is fantastic, and you can factor it as such. I find that that's a difficult thing for students to, to identify. So more often than not, you'll kind of skip that step, and then say, and then the more important question is, is there a coefficient other than 1 in front of the squared term? So if the answer to that is yes, then that makes it a complex trinomial. And then we have to either use the decomposition method to factor it, as we see here, 
or we're going to use the quick trick that I shared with you. So, or the trick, right? Whichever you prefer. Um, and again, there are a multitude of ways of factoring uh, other than the decomposition method or my quick trick. So those are just two of many. Um, another, but if you go back, if you look at your polynomial and um, you see that the squared term doesn't has a coefficient of one, then you lucked out and you have a simple trinomial. And in that case, the simple trinomial is factored by looking at that sum and product. In other words, what two numbers multiply to give you your last term and add to give you your middle term. And then those values become your factors. So uh, that's what you do with three terms, right? It's either a perfect square trinomial, it's either a complex trinomial or a simple trinomial. And the strategies for each of those are listed. Now, if you have four terms, then you may be in a situation where you have to factor by grouping. So in the case um, of that, you know, um, often when you have that, you'll have to look at it and see, well, is it organized in a way so that I can make nice, clean groups? So in this case, it does look like it's organized in a way that I can make some nice, clean groups. And then I pull out a common factor out of each group here. So for instance, 6x squared plus 9x, I can remove a, fa a common factor of 3x. And then I write the leftovers. And then I do the same thing in that second bracket. And then I see that two of my brackets are the same, so that gets pulled out as a common factor. They've put it second, however. And then the leftovers are 3x plus 1. Now, if I look at it and it doesn't appear that there are any common factors in the way that it's organized as such, then I might need to reorganize those terms in order to do what we just did in the last question and factor by grouping. Now, there are other variations of this that we saw in some of the homework, some harder difference of squares questions, um, and those may pop up as well. But generally speaking, this flowchart should help you to decipher which type of factoring is appropriate for a given problem. So in today's work, we're going to be looking at a worksheet that will demand you to know which type of factoring to use and to solve and factor appropriately.